Hello, I'm Hannibal Irizarry. Today I'd like to talk to you about defensive shooting. A lot of people think that defensive shooting, you have to go to all these schools to learn how to shoot, and go to other schools to learn how to shoot even better, then go to other schools to learn how to shoot even better, and you have to go out there with 5,000 rounds of ammunition, and you have to have 50 different kinds of guns, and three or four or 5,000 kinds of rifles, and you have to have a whole battalion of friends to go out there shooting with you so that you can learn how to shoot. Not true. There's a famous saying, don't know who said it once, but beware of the man with only one gun, for he may know how to use it. I think I saw it in a movie somewhere. Bottom line is, everybody's all hyped up about, do we get into the weaver stands? Do we get into the isosceles stands? Do we get into shooting one-handed with the right hand, one-handed with the left hand? Do you, know, do, you, do you hold the gun you know, with a pistol grip you know, to the side like this, the old gangster style? You know what? I find that the best thing to do is do what comes natural. If you're showing off at the gun range to your girlfriend, your significant other, your, your buddies, fine, shoot any way you want, get in any position you want, as long as you can make hits consistently on target, that's great. But, if you're going to be shooting in a life and death situation, you have to realize one thing is going to be paramount. If you miss, or if you hesitate, you're not coming out of it alive. At the gun range, you can make mistakes because the targets don't shoot back. In the real world, the bad guy may have a gun, he may have a baseball bat, he may have a knife. If you fumble your presentation of the gun when you pull it out and bring it out towards that target, that could be the end of your life. So, you know this already in the back of your mind. And the first thing that's going to happen to you is you're going to get that old crap factor when somebody attacks you. For that old crap factor, it even happens in the wildlife. You ever drive down the back road and you see a, a deer, it gets in the, in the headlights, what's the first thing it does? It squats real low real quick and freezes just for a split second before it catapults out there. Us humans do the same thing. We run into a situation where, where we're in danger and we freeze just for a second, squat down, take a low profile, because we are freaking out, we got that old crap factor. And then we, we either decide to run, we decide to fight, or we decide to flee. The reason why that happens is because in your subconscious, in your back of your brain, when you're in danger, you forget all the stuff that we know. The fancy motor skills, the eye-hand coordination, all that goes out the window. The only thing you rely on is your pure, basic survival instincts. Well... We need to learn how to use basic survival instincts because they're always going to be there whether you know how to shoot or not. You still have basic survival instincts. If you use those basic survival instincts, you will win a gunfight every chance you, you do it. So what do you do to use basic survival instincts? Forget aiming. Forget pull, trigger pulling. Forget everything. Forget presentation. Forget stance. None of that matters. Easiest way to, put, to take your gun and shoot your target is to point. See this little finger here? Look at that, you got two fingers. I bet you everybody watching this video and everybody who knows the person watching this video has the ability to point at something. And you do that with deadly accuracy. You see that, you see that, you see that, you see that, you see that. Look, both fingers, you can even point two directions at the same time. Why? We have been trained from childhood to use our fingers to point. Even though our mom is mine, spanked us in the back of the hand and said, don't point, that's rude. Bottom line is, Every human being on the planet knows how to point their finger, and we can point with extreme precision. Well, why can't we use that concept in a gunfight to save our lives? Let's see about that. This is my handgun, okay? I've got many. This is the one I'm going to use today. It is the Springfield Army XD-45, okay? It is a magazine-fed, recoil-operated, semi-automatic, fires the very powerful 45 ACP. I like to use 230 grain jacket hollow points. Now, it does hold, this is the magazine. It is, the magazine is loaded, but the gun is not. Just in case anybody out there is freaking out, you can see that the gun has no ammo in it. There's no bullets in it. You know, I wouldn't point a loaded gun in my face and, unless I knew it was, you know, incapable of firing. This is incapable of firing. 
There's no magazine in it, so you can see. Oh, look, there's people out there. So, I missed the target. There, where's that? Right there. Bottom line is, you know that this gun is empty. So, using an empty gun, I'm going to be pointing at you, so don't freak out. Now, let's go back to that pointing thing. If you notice your fingers, they're about, usually about the same size. What I like to do is, first of all, when you grab your gun, okay, your gun's going to be in a holster like this. The first thing you want to do is you want to grab your gun and get a nice purchase. You don't want to hold it down here because that will cause the gun to, rip, to, to recoil like this, which means you'll have trouble firing, okay? You don't want to hold the gun up like this because when this slide goes back, it's going to bite you. So you want to put your hand right up in this webbing here where it's got this design right here for you. Right? Right there is where you want the gun. You wrap your fingers around the gun and you always keep your finger off the, off the trigger until your sights are on the target. Okay, these are the rear sight, front sight in case you didn't know. So until you're ready to actually shoot, you never put your finger inside this trigger guard. So you have a second hand. This is the hand you're going to use to shoot with. It controls all the, con the, the, the manipulation of the gun. Okay? It fires. This is the firing hand. You have a second hand. Let's call that the support hand. The support hand is going to wrap itself right across here, just like this. Look at that. Both my fingers are almost the same size. Now, some people wrap a little bit farther. That's fine. Some people wrap a little bit back. That's fine. I don't care how you hold it. Whatever is comfortable to you, because in the end, it's your butt on the line, not mine. My fingers may be different than your fingers. My body may be different than your body. I guarantee you, you do not have this beautiful cake that I'm sitting here that I worked so hard to get. You probably have a six pack, which looks pathetic because it makes you look like you're anorexic. You think you got muscles, but no, you're just hungry. So come over to my house and get some barbecue so we can put that six pack into a cake. That's what the girls really like. Now, back to guns. You have the gun here. You grab yourself just like this, right? This is how I hold my gun. This is from the bottom. Now, I don't go like this to point at the guy. As I draw my gun, right, I can't cant it to the guy, and I present it right here in the middle. Now, if you notice where my fingers are, my two index fingers, that's these two fingers that are wiggling at you. I point them straight down. Now, if the gun was not in my hand, I'm pointing with two fingers. I'm pointing that way. I'm pointing that way. I'm pointing up, down, left, right. Look, I can even point sideways. It doesn't matter. I point. No matter where I want to point, boom, I point. I can, that's where, I'm, I'm looking, that's where it's pointing. I do it so easily. It's second nature. You do the same. So, if you grab the gun like this, and you point like this with the finger, look, automatically, the gun goes exactly where I want it to go. I am not muzzle sweeping you. I'm just, you're not even on the other side of the camera, so stop wigging out. But, I take my gun, again, I draw it out of my holster, put it right in front of me, get my hands together in the front, and immediately, I go straight out forward, and when, as soon as I get out, I don't have to look for the sights. They're already there, because my natural point of aim it's already got my eyeballs lined up. Yes, I focus on the front sight, but you don't have to at close range. All you have to do is point. Remember what I said? When you point with the finger, that's where everything is at, that you're looking at. When you point with your fingers, here's the fingers, you point at the target at close range, which is say 7 yards or 21 feet. That is what they decided, the people in the know have decided that's where you need to be able to draw and fire to survive because the guy's going to be able to run 21 feet or 7 yards and stick a knife in your chest if you don't shoot him by then. So, at 7 yards, you point, you pull the trigger, and bang, the gun goes bang. As a result, because you're pointing in that direction, you're going to hit in that direction. Now you're wondering, nobody pulls the trigger with the finger on the outside of the trigger guard, correct? So when you, as you're pulling out, you've already pointed, right? As you're pulling out, you slap that finger right in the trigger guard and you get in there. When you get in there, bang, you fire, the gun goes bang. And then the slide, of course, automatically goes to the rear. You're still pointing. See the finger still pointing. I am pointing in that direction. I don't even have to aim. I don't even have to use my sights. All I have to do is point, just like I am when I was five years old and I was pointing at something. Daddy, I want that. Guess what? I'm pointing. It's going to hit. Now, granted, this will not work if you're trying to shoot in a competition, shooting out at 50, 70, 80, 100 yards. No, it won't be as accurate. But in the life and death situation distances, which is the distance a guy has to be to take your wallet from you when he pulls a knife. You're going to point at him with this finger, one in the trigger and one here, just like that. You're pointing at him. You do not need to look at those sights. If you use the sights, you will be a lot more accurate. 
so you should use your sights. I'm not saying don't, but I, I guarantee you, trust me, when the crap hits the fan and your life is in danger, you are not going to remember to be looking for the front sight post. You're not going to remember about trigger control, trigger squeeze, proper grip. You're not in shooting stance. Should I go to a, a weaver stance? Should I go to an isosceles stance? None of that's going to remember. You know what else is not going to work? You're going to experience audible exclusion, which means you're not going to hear anything that anybody is telling at you. People are going to be yelling at you. You're not going to hear it. There's going to be traffic in, in, in the background. You're not going to hear it because you're focused on the threat. Your eyes are going to do the same thing. You're going to look at that guy, and that's the only thing you're going to see. You're going to forget about your front sight. And every firearm instructor tells you, Focus on the front sight, focus on the front sight, focus on the front sight. Well, we our basic instinct is to focus on the threat. So if you're focusing on the threat, how in the crap are you gonna focus on the front sight when you're doing when you're working with your subconscious with your basic animal instincts? So that focus on the front sight is not gonna work. That's great if the guys cross the street 25 yards, you have time to take the time to focus on the front sight. But when the guy is within knife fighting distances, which could be from anywhere from zero to seven yards or 21 feet. It's up to you to figure out how in the world you're going to pull that gun out here, get it out here without him grabbing it. If he's, less, if he's up in, in arm's range, you do this, he takes the gun away, you deserve him to take the gun away from him. Give it to him and, have him, and give him a box of ammo so you can have fun at the range because you're dumb enough to give it to him. If he's that close to you, keep the gun close. Pull up to here and bang, bang, bang. Guess what? I'm pointing again. Look at where my fingers are. From right here, I go bang, bang, bang. I am pointing. I don't, I'm not even using the, my sights. Right up here. If he's close enough to grab my gun, he's going to get shot. I don't care if I put a perfect type groups in the heart. So what? I'm just going to fill him with lead. I got 13 plus 1 in here. One of them is going to hit him. And if at knife fighting distances or at give me your wallet distances, he's going to get tagged. So from up in here, bang, 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 he's a little bit farther, I can take the time to get out there and aim. But I'm not aiming, I'm just pointing. It's called point shooting. Can't speak, I forgot my language. Point shooting. It's also called instinctive shooting. At close range, seven yards or below, that's all you need. So stop panicking about, oh, I have to get the proper shooting stance, or oh, my Bianchi uh, holster has a snap that I have to take off. None of that crap counts. Once you have the gun in your hand, because of course you, that's the first thing, you got to make sure you put your hand back there and make sure you have a good purchase of the firearm. Once you have the gun in your hand and you pull it out, just point, pull the trigger, gun go bang. That's all it takes. You do not have to sit there and close one eye and put yourself in this position and be like, mm, let me get my front side post where I got to remember my breath control. Deep breath in, let it out, <sighs> squeeze. You don't have time for that crap. You can either lay down some rounds, lay them down now, like you had to lay them down yesterday. If you hit the guy before he showed up to the scene, that's too late. Get him now. You got to shoot now. You have to shoot fast. And you'll keep shooting until he either surrenders, runs away, or drops like a sack of flour and is no longer a threat. Once that happens, you cannot shoot him again. You become a criminal at that point, and you'll have to answer for that. So, just to recap real quick. In close range, 21 feet or less, for you metric guys, you know, 7 yards. Well, that's actually standard. 7 yards or less. That's, that's a 7-yard rule, 21-foot rule. If they're closer than that, you need to have the gun already in hand, and you should already be pointing at them because they're close enough to hurt you. They're going to be up on you in 2 seconds, and you only have 2 seconds to pull the gun, get up to near shoot, so you don't have time to aim. Just point, just like that. Put your finger in there and bang, 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 bang. Fire 3, 4, 5 shots. Pause for effect, see what happens, see if you got anything. That's it. Any questions, you can email me at, what's my email address? I forget. It is one good le leatherneck, one good leatherneck at gmail.com. Please forgive my erroneous mess-ups in this. This is my very first video. Okay, actually my second one. I have another one out there where I actually shoot at three targets, five shots on three targets in 2.53 seconds from poster. Check that out. Thank you. And if you have any questions, again, I will answer any questions that I can. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Crackshot Chronicles.